Hi, this is Miles Marie, the soldier of Mary. I want to look at the mystery surrounding the death of Saint Joseph, the foster father of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This is a fascinating topic because we find the saints, as it were, in two camps in their contemplation around the death of this holy patriarch. We find a number of saints affirming that at the end of his earthly life, or after dying, Saint Joseph was taken up into heaven and that his body, his body is united with his soul in the glories of heaven. Others Others state that St. Joseph's body remains on earth, incorrupt. The first view, that St. Joseph's body has been assumed body and soul into heaven, was taken up into heaven. People who take this point of view generally seem to take the view that St. Joseph died. That's definitely part of the tradition. The St. Joseph died a holy death with our Lord by his side and Our Lady. St. Joseph is a patron of the happy death. So St. Joseph definitely died. His soul and body were separated. But then what happened next? The best book on St. Joseph's life, the most comprehensive is this beautiful book by the convert, the English Catholic convert from the 19th century, Edward Healy Thompson. And his book on the life of St. Joseph gives a lot of evidence, quotes a lot of saints supporting the tradition of the assumption of Saint Joseph and his view or the view that seems to be suggested whenever people want to spell out exactly how the assumption occurred is homing in on those rather strange verses in Saint Matthew's Holy Gospel after our Lord has died there's this section telling us about how the tombs of some of the saints were opened and that those saints from the Old Testament appeared to others after our Lord's resurrection. Now, Edward Thompson considers that surely Saint Joseph would have been one of these individuals who rose at our Lord's resurrection and appeared to people in Jerusalem. There's really not much in St. Matthew's Gospel about this event and there's really not much in the early church fathers about this event either. It occurred, but we don't actually know that these saints didn't then return back to the graves. We don't know that they were assumed into heaven, but granting that they were assumed into heaven, Thompson says, well, St. Joseph is going to be one of those, of course. And so after he's appeared to a few people in Jerusalem, he's going to go body and soul into heaven. And then there's a number of arguments to support the assumption of St. Joseph. Above all, there is this comparison between the earthly Holy Trinity and, well, the Holy Trinity. The idea is that the St. Joseph, our Lord in his human nature and our Lady, constituted an earthly holy trinity and so it's fitting it's right that in heaven right now there should be body and soul our lord our lady and saint joseph then there's another argument which is based on the closeness of saint joseph to our lady on earth and our lord and that saint joseph really suffered he had a uh, he had all the difficulties of being the foster father of the redeemer having to do the flight into egypt having to be at bethlehem and have the baby jesus born in the cave all the the losing and the finding of the child of jesus in the temple the idea is that saint joseph suffered a lot and was so intimate to Jesus and Mary on this life such that of course he would be rewarded it's fitting that he would be rewarded with an assumption into heaven and then there's another theory Joseph was free from sin or sanctified in the womb but again there's that's a kind of theory in its own right that probably needs to be defended but if Saint Joseph was granted an immaculate conception then it's suggested well he would then be assumed 
So there's a number of different reasons to suggest that St. Joseph was assumed into heaven. Above all, it's because a number of mystics and, and doctors of the church have really thought highly of the assumption theory. Francis de Sales, Bernardine of Siena. St. Bernardine of Siena, one day when he was preaching about the assumption of St. Joseph, a miraculous cross appeared above his head that seemed to endorse what he was saying. And in recent times, John the 23rd, who has been canonized, he preached that St. Joseph was assumed into heaven, that it's piously believed that St. Joseph was assumed into heaven after he died, presumably at this time in St. Matthew's Gospel, the body and soul were reunited and St. Joseph was taken into glory. We do have from the early church a number of statements regarding the tomb of St. Joseph. And this can be seen as supporting the assumption theory because we've got a tradition that is recorded by St. Bede and we've got a tradition recorded by St. Jerome that the tomb of St. Joseph was empty. Unfortunately, the two traditions actually say that the tomb is in different locations. One says the Valley of Josephat, the other says the Garden of Gethsemane. So I don't know, so how reliable is that? Two traditions, two tombs, two being empty. Certainly no body has been found and there are no relics of Saint Joseph, no bodily relics of Saint Joseph. That seems to support an assumption or does it support the other position? Now I want to talk about the other position. The other position, the other position seems really to date back to one of my favorite saints, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. You know, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, through her visions, has changed a lot of how we see the life of our Lord and um, even aspects of the chronology. And maybe people would have just thrown her out the window as this Augustinian stigmatist of the 18th century who had some strange visions but was it just her imagination was it just invented by by the secretary you know that they used to go and see her and write down the notes but then there was a finding of the holy house or we don't call it the holy house the house of John and Mary in Ephesus that changed everything when that house was found based on the writings of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich and no other writings based on her descriptions of the location of the house the house was found it was acknowledged by locals to have been they thought it was a monastery an ancient monastery it's been dated back to the time the time of our Lord or the foundations have been had a fireplace in the exact location and Catherine Emmerich had suggested that the fireplace was the dimensions of the house corresponded the location of the house the building materials blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich who never left her part of northern Germany was able to inform us through a vision of where Our Lady lived and in fact her visions have persuaded a large chunk of the catholic world that our lady died and was assumed from ephesus rather than jerusalem that's another video it's another topic for another day and catherine emmerich the finding of that house which is an amazing story it should be made into a film it really is an awesome story the the discovery of that house but she changed so much her visions have changed so much of our lord's chronology they've enlightened us so much she tells us it's her she's the one that tells us that saint joseph wasn't assumed no he's incorrupt and his body his tomb remains hidden to this day she writes about the death and the burial of saint joseph only a few men followed the coffin with jesus and mary but I saw it accompanied by angels and environed with light. Joseph's remains were afterwards removed by the Christians to Bethlehem and interred. 
I think I can still see him lying there incorrupt. Imagine that. Imagine that. Buried somewhere near Bethlehem, the body of Saint Joseph. We have one other holy individual telling us this. And this man, I didn't even know about him before researching for this topic. Father Paul Moll, who was an amazing, a bit like another Curia of ours, really. He, or a Padre Pio, his whole life was spent conversing with the saints. He was a Benedictine living in the 19th century. I mean, he, he had visions of our Lord, Our Lady, St. Joseph, all through his life. The number of miracles he's doing throughout his life, healings, curings, conversions, reading of souls. Amazing. There's a book on his life and I was flicking through it. It's really edifying. And the next time I go on a retreat, I'm going to read the life of Father Paul of Moll. He's really awesome. But one of the things that the book contains is another quote regarding the body of Saint Joseph. Father Paul said to a person from Uskamp who had come to see him, I guess for a spiritual chat or something, Father Paul said, in an ecstasy, a saint has seen the body of Saint Joseph preserved intact in a tomb, the sight of which is yet unknown. The more the glorious spouse of the most blessed virgin is honored, the sooner will the finding of his body take place, which will be a day of great joy for the church. Father Paul's saying to me, it could be that he's referring to Saint Anne, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, who lived before him and is not from a part of the world too far from him. Maybe he even read some of her writings, heard her tradition, her vision regarding the incorrupt body. But the second part, the idea that the body will be found and it will be a day of great joy for the church. That's something that he's adding to the tradition. I mean, Father Paul Moll has got so many instances in his life when Our Lady is appearing to him, or he says Our Lady appears to him. So many miracles. I know he's not been canonized, but really he's a serious player. And what he says has to be taken seriously also. Let me add a few other thoughts in favor of the incorrupt tradition. I wonder about the tradition of burying the statue of Saint Joseph, which dates back to at least Saint Teresa of Avila when she was trying to sell a piece of land. She buried a statue of Saint Joseph in the ground and others have been doing this. You might have done this yourself. And even some people have stumbled across or not quite stumbled, maybe stumbled, but some people have dug up statues of Saint Joseph because they've maybe bought some land and they want to lay some foundations down for something else and they find a statue the statue is of saint joseph as it were incorrupt right so that's that's interesting maybe that tradition of the burying of the statues and the finding of the statues maybe that which dates back or is endorsed by saint Teresa of avila who was a great client of saint joseph and strongly devoted to him maybe that supports the incorrupt uh, hypothesis. Another, another idea is when we think about the comparison with Moses, the holy patriarch, because the body of Moses was buried and it seems like his body is incorrupt. At least that seems to be the suggestion of St. Jude's letter about Satan and the archangel Michael arguing over the body of Saint Joseph. I think his body is incorrupt. Certainly, the traditions around Saint Joseph tell us that towards the end of his life, he didn't get weaker. He was still strong. He still had all his teeth. They hadn't decayed. That's what a lot of the Eastern legends or fathers tell us about Saint Joseph. And the same was said of Moses in Exodus. And there are some similarities between Moses and Saint Joseph. Both of them dying, as it were, on the verge of the promised land, right? St. Joseph didn't get to see 
our Lord's preaching ministry. Joseph dying before the baptism of our Lord, Moses dying before the parting of the Jordan River. Maybe likewise then, there's, a, there's another comparison, another identification in both of their bodies being incorrupt. Why does St. Joseph's body is going to be found and not Moses's? That's um, up to Almighty God, or maybe Moses' body was taken into heaven. One final point is that at Fatima, St. Joseph appeared blessing the world with the child Jesus. But that vision at Fatima was definitely a vision, an imaginative vision that the children received on their retina, on their brains, on their minds, because we know that because the child Jesus, Jesus isn't, Jesus physically no longer is a child. And so it wouldn't make sense for that to be the physical body of our Lord blessing the world. And then an instant later, our Lord appears alongside his mother, Our Lady of Sorrows. So it's kind of those things, while the miracle of the sun is taking place, are definitely of the vision world. And that's definitely something that a separated soul can do. You don't need a physical body to appear in a vision like that. We know that from our other apparitions, saints have appeared to people and they don't need bodies to appear to people. Being a separated spirit, you can appear to people. And I think that's everything I can say about this subject for the moment. I really love the idea of St. Joseph's body being incorrupt and that it's waiting to be found. Maybe, maybe we need to get more people to go through the archives of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. There's bound to be more notes of hers that haven't been read, that haven't been translated into English. Maybe, maybe there's more notes. Maybe we have a location. And just as the house of Our Lady and St. John was found, maybe through her notes, we can find the body of St. Joseph. Or maybe, you know, she only says around Bethlehem area. And then she says the body was moved as well. So, you know, we don't have much to go, but go from. Maybe there's another, maybe God's going to raise up another saint to inform us. Or maybe when things are at their worst, there'll be this discovery of this incorrupt saint. Father Paul Moll's body was discovered incorrupt. That's interesting. And there have been many other saints obviously discovered incorrupt. It would be such a glory for the church to find St. Joseph's body incorrupt. You know, surely it would draw many people to the true faith, the one true faith. But there has to be, according to Father Paul Moll, there has to be an age of great devotion to St. Joseph for this to happen. There needs to be an age of great devotion to him. In recent years, there has been, with Pope Francis's Year of St. Joseph, a lot of people doing the consecration to St. Joseph right now. Maybe we're building up to it. Maybe we're building up to the discovery of the, of the incorrupt body. The majority theory is definitely that St. Joseph was assumed into heaven. You know, definitely that's the majority of saints through the history of the church have been of that mind. But then most people seem to think that Our Lady was assumed from Jerusalem and that she died at Jerusalem. But that all changed with the discovery of the, of the house of, of Our Lady and, and St. John. And then people realized that there was a bit more in the tradition that supported Ephesus than previously thought of. Let me know in the comments below how you, what you think, whether you think St. Joseph was assumed into heaven, whether you think his body is lying in corrupt waiting to be found. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.